Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Thank you for your interest. What I would like to express today with regards to my observations on Plectromynthos caudatus since 2018 when I bought this beautiful, beautiful orchid, thinking that I could grow her here in southern Spain successfully. So, what went wrong? To give this video a little pop of hope, my Tolumnia pomegranate is right next to it so that we don't just look at a sad orchid that is absolutely not in its happy place. To get into this video, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to imagine that you are in West Africa. You are at around sea level, maybe 300 meters, but not more, and you're sort of in a jungle environment where the sun doesn't really shine through the canopy of the trees, but the light is yet bright, and every once in a while you will hit pockets of sun, but there is a breeze going, a good breeze, a pleasant breeze. Not strong, but it doesn't take away from how you're feeling. It's hot, it's muggy, it's like 30 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is 80% and you feel like you can't breathe. So the breeze is there, but it's not really a relief because you are surrounded by trees, you're surrounded by dripping humidity, and every breath you take, it feels like it's wet and you're not getting any air. You think it's so unpleasant that all you can think of is a nice air-conditioned room with a little umbrella cocktail to reward yourself for having gone into the natural habitat of a Plectromynthos caudatus. If you were lucky enough on your little venture there into the rainforest, you would have looked up and you might have been able to see one. And if you were really lucky, you might have been able to see one in bloom. So I hope that your little adventure out into the rainforest, putting up with all these conditions so adverse to the comfort zone of many, many human beings, me not included, <laughs> I hope that you did manage to get to see the blooms of the Plectromynthos caudatus. Right, you can open your eyes again, nothing has changed. My little orchid here is still declining, but I have just given you a little bit of a scenario of where this orchid is the happiest and where it grows the best and why it grows so well. The high humidity, temperatures do not drop, not even in what is considered winter in that environment, below 20 degrees Celsius. Usually it hovers around 30 degrees Celsius during the day, 20 degrees Celsius at night, and it has a lot of rain. So I hope your little adventure was during the winter months that are supposedly a little bit more pleasant with temperatures around 26 degrees Celsius, maybe, maybe 20 degrees at night, but less rain during the winter. Still very high humidity, but less rain. But if you were there during the time of year where it is 80, 90% humidity, chances are you found yourself sloshing around in rain rain. That makes your cocktail go down much, much better probably as well. All right, all things aside, this was one of my wishlist orchids and I was very pleased to find her. I bought her back in 2018. I did my research on her and I said, hey, I'm in southern Spain. This is gonna work great. Yes, she is an epiphyte. Yes, she likes an airy mix. She likes oxygen, air, etc. around her roots. She likes high humidity. What can go wrong? Seeing as I grow in Lekka and self-watering, I compensate my lack of humidity with this specific setup. When I first got her, she was in an open basket and everything was hunky-dory. And I thought, what I'm going to do is just put her without any media into another clear pot where I could observe the roots and then dunk her as you do on the daily and that would be it. And that was working really great because I got her at around spring. So she did fantastically for the first six to seven months when she was with me and I thought this is easy. The only thing I noticed while I had her the first six or seven months, how sensitive her roots are, while they are actively growing and while they are vigorous, it's all going very, very well. They will find those little itty bitty nooks and crannies and holes to get into and then bruising a root tip, especially on this one, stops the roots from growing. So I parked that idea. I said, this is not going very well. I am losing my root tips while the orchid is trying to grow them. And then I thought, well, Lekka self-watering has worked with other angbrecoids and as well as with other vandaceous orchids. And I thought, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do with you. You still have a lot of humidity and airflow around your roots and the pot itself 
possibly the LECA will encourage a little bit of the evaporation from the LECA to help support a little microclimate of humidity around the leaves. I need that. I need that microclimate for all my orchids because I don't have humidity that I can be proud of. Usually it hovers around 30% throughout the entire year, maybe raising a little bit during the winter, but now we're coming into what actually went wrong here and it's not just one factor. If you're considering buying this orchid for your environment, listen carefully. <laughs> It's not just about the temperatures that you can provide maybe for 80% of the year. This orchid responds very, very sensitively to everything that is not going well. So despite the fact that I have a lot of heat here, the moment the temperature is not to her liking, everything stops. And it's not a stop while she is resting through the winter. It is actually the start of a progressive decline. So I do not support with heat mats or any heaters, anything like that in my grow space. And my grow space will drop to 15 degrees Celsius during the winter months, November, December, January, February. That is a long time and this orchid doesn't like that one bit. Remember, her comfort zone is a minimum of 20 degrees Celsius. That includes the temperature of the roots. My LECA and self-watering setup has the evaporative cooling effect. So even if the ambient air is, let's say, 20 degrees as to what this orchid would prefer, what is happening in the pot, I always guesstimate a three degree differential, which puts my pot at 17 degrees if I had this orchid in its ideal minimum climate conditions. You see where I'm getting at. Temperature is fundamental for this orchid. If you cannot provide a 20 degree minimum temperature throughout the entire year, it is possible you're going to be struggling with this orchid unless you accessorize with a lot of additional heat if your climate goes into a kind of a winter. Evaporative cooling from my setup, that adds to that factor. Now, Please don't judge me for not being able to do any supporting accessories to save this orchid. Please know that I wish I could, but I can't. So let's just put that out there. I know what I need to do, I just cannot do it. Right, so back to the temperature. Big, big factor is its temperature when it gets too low for its personal liking. Now, for me, the major factor is my lack of humidity, regardless of my setup. We get to the part that I was observing for many, many years. And I did promise Norman Torok a video on this in spring of this year because I've been watching my orchid now for a long time and I'm like going, what is going wrong with you? I did understand the temperature factor, but there's more to this than just the temperature, even if you get the temperature right. So let me talk to you about air pressure. Air pressure and humidity go hand in hand. As the humidity increases, air pressure decreases. Since water vapor is less dense than dry air, if both have the same temperature, and this orchid lives in an environment that both have the same temperature, the air has a temperature and the water vapor has a temperature. It is at sea level. And the addition of water vapor decreases the overall density of the air and lowers its pressure. This is where I'm coming to the conclusion with regards to what happened here. Humidity, we always say, is a factor. Our roots need humidity. The aerial roots need humidity. They need airflow. We know about humidity in orchids, but when it comes to this one, this is my conclusion, and you are so welcome to correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. When we talk about air pressure decreasing as the humidity increases, when this orchid finds itself in low humidity, then that is true as well with regards to the increase of air pressure. Low humidity, air pressure increases. High humidity, air pressure decreases. So in my low humidity environment, my air pressure around this orchid has increased to such a degree that it is affecting the cell structure. And that happens at the leaf tips. That also happens on oncidiums and other orchids. You will see speckling and you think it's a fungus. It is not. In my opinion, air pressure has everything to do with what we see as speckles and we freak out and we try to treat them. Cells will collapse when air pressure increases. I know that this sounds a little bit of a funky, you know, I'm not a scientist, but in my head, this made the most sense of why my orchid was getting the black spotting. The black spotting itself, then, even when you cut it off, it proves it wasn't a fungus. 
because the cells would continue to decline along that leaf, causing subsequent leaf drop, and then you get a bare stem like you see on mine. There is no stem rot. So in my initial assumption, I'm thinking, whoops, it's got a fungus. And here comes another kicker. I treated it with copper at manufacturer's recommendation levels which didn't impede the growth in the first couple of years, but then I started cutting off the tips to get rid of what I thought was a fungus. So you see, my whole cycle was, what do I know about an orchid, how to treat whatever infection, etc., and then move on from there, but my leaves kept dropping. We are now at the end of 2021. So this has been a long process, me watching this orchid and wondering what is going wrong here. And we can put temperature aside as one thing, but if I were to supplement temperature and heat mats and whatever heater around it to make it super happy, I still do not have the humidity that this orchid requires. So I have a higher air pressure around the whole orchid, which is causing cell collapse and then subsequent leaf die back. And then of course, roots go down the hill because again, evaporative cooling. Now you can say, add to that the copper treatment that I did. Well, I stopped the copper treatment after two or three applications according to manufacturer's labels. And in the past, I never had issues with my copper treatment and my orchids. That problem only arose recently this season in 2021. And I won't be repeating that because now I'm paranoid. So the first two years, it wasn't about the copper treatment. Just want to put that aside. The reason I'm singling this orchid out in a separate video is to bring the point across about air pressure and what humidity does around the cells of our orchids. And if you see oncidiums with black spots on them, they always say it's probably a lack of humidity, but why? because the air pressure increases when there's less humidity causing the cells to collapse. That is what went wrong here. And that is why I cannot grow a Plectromynthus caudatus, unfortunately, in my climate. Goodness me, I still hope that you're around. <laughs> right. <laughs> So Norman, if you are watching this, I wonder if you remember our conversation from almost a year ago where I said to you, I am going to make a video explaining my thought process regarding what is going on with this orchid specifically because it is the most obvious and the less forgiving that I have in my collection. And when we get to orchid lingo and humidity, I am going to address this subject again because Humidity has something to do with air pressure. High humidity, less air pressure. Low humidity, higher air pressure. Cell collapse. Anyway, that is my conclusion. The main factor as to what went wrong with this orchid. And then we have, you know, additional little things that also added to the whole fiasco. And here we are. Now, I'm not going to bin her at this point in time. In this video, I wanted to unpot her and show her roots. And then, you know, it's not going to be a pretty sight. But, you know, she's still green. I'm going to keep her in the grow space and hope for the best. But I don't have any high hopes. I still wanted to show her to you at this point in time, simply because I am starting to delve into the subject on my channel of humidity, orchid lingo video coming up at some point. And this orchid is my example. This is my reference video, and they will both be linked. Whether this orchid is still going to be around for that humidity video, I do not know. But here we are, you have a little bit of a taster and you can see the result of what air pressure and humidity does to an orchid and how it will not respond no matter how well you take care of it. If you don't have the humidity, even if you have the temperatures and everything dialed in, if you do not have the right humidity level for some orchids, they will not grow for you. Gosh, that sounds radical, but anyway, <laughs> sorry, maybe they will grow for you. Let me correct that. They will probably grow for you because you know more than I do. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope that this video was of interest to you. I really appreciate that you stuck around, watched and listened to me bring two things together that in my head have brought me to this conclusion. Once again, if you disagree, let me know in the comments below. As I said, I'm not trashing her, so if there's still hope, I would like to read about it. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day, but on one condition, as always, that you stay safe, please, and take care. Bye.